entrepreneurs and small business owners who are temporarily unable to function due to the global pandemic can now access government social assistance benefits previously offered only to persons in the tourism sector. According to the nation's chief financial advisor who made the revelation while in Parliament today, applications will be accepted beginning next week. Janelle Longley has the details. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Peter Turnquest revealing Monday that government has now expanded its social assistance to self-employed persons outside of the tourism industry impacted by the COVID-19 emergency order. These self-employed persons outside of the tourism trade are also facing complete loss of income and the challenge of meeting their financial obligations. They too will receive a benefit payment of $200 Per week. The program before today was strictly for those persons in the tourism sector directly impacted by the shutdown, including hotel-related staff, straw vendors, jet ski operators, braiders, and taxi drivers. Now self-employed persons, according to the minister, can receive assistance once meeting this criteria. The self-employed person must have a valid business license issued by the Department of Inland Revenue. They must have no additional employees. A sole proprietor with employees can apply for the government's small business continuity loan program. The self-employed person must have and provide a copy of their National Insurance Board card or other government ID with their NIB number. They must not be in full-time employment and thus eligible for other NIB employment benefits. They must be able to demonstrate active income from their related businesses in either January or February 2020. According to statistics provided by the Department of Inland Revenue, some 7,000 self-employed persons across the Bahamas meet the criteria. And in this vein, government has set aside some $5.9 million to assist. However, before distributing any payouts, Minister Turnquest says officials must ensure that applicants aren't collecting from other agencies. Any claim is just disbursed. NIB will also check with the Department of Social Services and the Small Business Development Center to ensure that there is no duplication of assistance. Now, persons employed in the tourism industry will receive payouts for the next eight weeks, totaling $200 a week. However, according to the minister, those involved in this self-employed expansion will only receive payouts for as long as the emergency powers order is in effect. And that stands to be lifted on the 8th of April. Janelle Longley... Eyewitness News. Thanks a lot, Janelle. Well, joining us live tonight on the phone is the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, the Honorable Peter Trunquist, to talk more about this program. Uh, good evening, DPM, and thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you, Clint. Thanks for having me. Um, obviously, we would have heard in Parliament today the discussion to now provide assistance uh, for, for those who are perhaps self-employed in the tourism sector. Um, and let's talk more about what they will qualify for um, as far as assistance. Is it on a case-by-case -case basis? Um, if you are involved in the tourism industry as a uh, self-employed person, uh, then you can apply uh, through the National Insurance Board for the government-supported uh, um, program, uh, which would qualify you for $200 a week uh, for an eight-week period. Um, and that program, in order to qualify for it, uh, you just have to prove that you were in the tourism trade uh, and that uh, you have been impacted by this shutdown. You have to have had paid your national insurance, so you have to have had your business license uh, and all of the other paid all of the other taxes that you would have been expected to pay as a business person. Uh, once you can provide those things, then you would you would be able to uh, benefit from that program. How much will this cost the government to fund this particular program? That particular program is about $6 million. Obviously, people are, are, are going to wonder how long are we expected to be in this crisis. We notice a lot of the programs that government is rolling out have on it pretty much the, around the eight-week period. Is that when we believe we may be able to kind of return to some level of normalcy, or is that just when we will have to review again based on where we are? 
So I think uh, the initial uh, thinking around this uh, from all of the medical experts, both here and internationally, was that this was hopefully going to be around an uh, eight-week event. Uh, Obviously, things have changed significantly uh, since we would have initially uh, developed these programs, and it's now looking like it may take a little bit longer for this to clear. Um, so as you rightly say, uh, at the end uh, or drawing towards the end of this initial eight-week period, uh, we will have to relook at these programs to see uh, if we can uh, extend them, whether we should extend them, uh, and to uh, to what extent um, or how long we should extend them for. Because obviously, uh, if this becomes a longer-term event, uh, then there's going to have to be some adjustments that are going to be necessary in the program, uh, as well as uh, uh, the type of programs that we're able to offer, because even government has a, a, a bottom. Uh, and so certainly we do not want to get into a situation where we uh, put such a drain on, on our resources uh, that we're not able to sustain the program. Um, so for now, uh, we, we've uh, come up with uh, what we believe is a uh, sensible affordable uh, program, uh, and we will reassess as we come towards the end based upon information uh, as it becomes available to us. It's interesting you said that because the Prime Minister in Parliament today did mention when he was on the floor uh, that, that you know, uh, he, want, he wanted people to understand what is being predicted for the future so that the opposition would not use it against the government uh, when they do hear the state of finances. That kind of puts things in context that it's going to be perhaps when we talk when we talk about the budget coming up in May, a pretty grim picture. Are we expecting some serious figures that perhaps we've never seen before? Well, you know, we're working our hardest to reprioritize our programs uh, to see where we can uh, uh, cut back or or uh, maybe delay uh, some of the initiatives that we would have liked to have put forward without sacrificing uh, the services to the Bahamian people and the benefits that the Bahamian people uh, require, uh, as well as the, the overall modernization of government that is so important and critical, uh, as we're seeing today, uh, in terms of being able to work in a digital environment, uh, to work remotely uh, and, and from flexible uh, circumstances. Um, so I, I do anticipate that we our borrowing is going to probably be more than we would have liked and that we would have anticipated, uh, as we would have been uh, well underway uh, in our consolidation effort uh, uh, if it had not been for this event uh, and Hurricane Dorian before it. Um, but we're certainly going to do our very best to, to try and limit the amount of debt that we take on uh, and the exposure uh, to the government. Uh, uh, because, again, we don't know what is before us. This is, uh, again, uh, almost uncharted territory. Uh, and I, w- I only say almost because there was the Spanish flu uh, back in the 19, early 1900s. Um, but it's certainly in the modern uh, um, um, age, this is an unprecedented uh, event. Uh, and, and so, you know, we're kind of writing the book on this as we go forward. Uh, and so we don't know where the end is. Um, and then until we know where the end is, we have to be careful uh, and as conservative as possible to ensure that we can ride out this storm without amassing uh, a huge debt load that is going to hamper us from uh, uh, engaging in productive recovery efforts uh, once the crisis is, uh, has passed. DPM, is it possible for the Bahamas to steer out of this and avoid a recession or is that almost uh, inevitable? Well, I think the the experts uh, have predicted that we are going to be in a recession. In fact, uh, you know, I I don't think it is a matter of whether we're going to be in a recession. The chances are we already are in a recession, uh, a global recession. The the real trick now is to ensure that we don't go into a global depression, Mm -hmm. uh, which will have a a whole new set of uh, uh, challenges for us. Um, So hopefully this will be a shallow, uh, short-term recession, uh, and we can come out of it. Uh, on the other side of it uh, um, reasonably strong uh, and our source markets will be available to us again uh, and we can start to market and, and uh, uh, attract visitors back to the islands again uh, in, in, in a, in a sh- relatively short period of time. I think that it, it, realistically we're looking towards the last quarter to the beginning of, the, of 2021 before we will see any real turnaround. Um, as you know, the Bahamian economy tends to lag uh, the U.S. economy. 
And so even as we see them get back to some sense of normalcy, uh, it's going to take a couple of months before we start to see that effect here in the Bahamas. And so we do have to prepare for the long term. Uh, as I've said to Bahamians uh, um, all over, as well as uh, to businesses, this is the time to engage your uh, conservative uh, uh, fiscal plans, uh, to look towards your business continuity strategies, uh, to ensure that you can survive this period uh, and uh, hopefully uh, hang in there uh, in terms of uh, business to be able to take advantage of the recovery that will come. I've got a couple more questions before I let you go. The first one is, obviously, in order to replenish uh, the resources, government is going to need to raise revenue, raise capital, raise money. Um, does that mean then increase or additional taxes in, in the upcoming budget in order to be able to do that? No, we have no intention at this point of raising any taxes. I mean, do you think about it? It's counterproductive. You have an, an economy that is slow, that is uh, uh, struggling. Uh, to add tax burden to that is not going to help you. Uh, in fact, it'll just uh, prolong the, the, the recovery that much longer as, as people try to uh, find the capital to be able to uh, uh, do the things that they need to, in order to recapitalize or to restart their businesses, as well as be faced with this increased burden from taxes. So I, I don't see that as a, as a part of the strategy at this point. Uh, I, I think that uh, we still have some opportunities and, and uh, uh, other levers that we can pull before we get to that point. Now, again, you know, if this thing drags out into 12 months, 18 months, uh, as I say, you know, there are, there are a whole host of other challenges uh, that, that, that come to the, to the forefront that we're going to have to address. Uh, but I, again, I, I don't see uh, taxes as being a part of that. Okay, and finally, people want to know, I know Atlantis has, has committed to paying a percentage of the salary for their employees. So has Bahamar. Uh, will people be able to get benefits as well, even though they're on a reduced salary? Or will that exempt them from benefits because they're still receiving a portion of a salary? No, uh, the National Insurance Board has its rules with respect to unemployment insurance. Uh, and, and the way that I understand it, and I'm not the expert on national insurance, but uh, the way that I understand it is that they will calculate what the um, the reduced uh, payment, um, salary payment is, equate that to uh, how many weeks of full-time employment uh, that, that amounts to, and then the national insurance uh, unemployment benefit will kick in after that. Uh, so those persons will be able to benefit uh, from the National Insurance uh, Unemployment Benefit Program uh, for the, the uh, uh, defined periods uh, as outlined in the, in the program. All right. Deputy Prime Minister, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate your calling in. Thank you so much.